I just wanted to make this intro really quick just saying that this may step on some people's toes and I'm okay with that because I care more about souls than I do about hurting people's feelings. And I just want to say that this is not a judgmental video. I love everyone and we all need the grace of God and we all fall short. And I just want you to have a heart check and just watch this video until the end. Today we have become so comfortable with sin, Satan doesn't even really have to hide anymore. He's gotten so many Christians or Christians to sin left and right simply because they've let him have a foothold, just because we've become so conditioned and so comfortable with sin that's all around us. A lot of the times I hear that, oh, I'm Christian, I'm just not religious, and I don't like that because a lot of the times when people say that, it's because what that means is they believe in Jesus, but they're denying the, the power of the gospel, that they want to keep living in their sin. They simply believe in Jesus, and that's sufficient enough for them. But as we read scripture, we know that that's not sufficient enough and that's playing the hypocrite and Jesus doesn't like that. Jesus didn't die on the cross for us to keep sinning. That's why he died on the cross. He he died on the cross for our sins, yes, but some people use that as an excuse of, oh, he died for my sins so I'm forgiven and I can just keep sinning. No, he died so that we don't sin anymore. He died for our sins. That's the reason why he was crucified. He was crucified because of our sins, so why would we keep on sinning? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. That means because we sin, we deserve death. We deserve damnation. But when Jesus died on the cross, he died so that we can be forgiven of those sins. He, he didn't die so that we can keep sinning. No, he died so that we can accept the gift of salvation that was given to us when he died and raised three days later. Being Christian doesn't just mean believing in Jesus. Anyone can believe in Jesus. The demons believe in Jesus and they shudder. They're, they're terrified. They tremble at the name of Jesus. And so it's much more than that. It's a daily repentance and saying, you know, God, I trust you. I give you my heart. And a lot of the times when people call Christians religious, it's because they're convicted of their own sin. And that Christian is standing up for what's right. They're st standing up against sin. We shouldn't act like the Pharisees of the Bible, but we also need to stop making excuses for our sin and get a, a real relationship with Jesus and take our relationship with Jesus seriously. Not just say we believe in Jesus, but truly live out this life for him. Jesus says that if you love me, you will obey me. And so if you, if you say you're a Christian and you say you love Jesus, but you're willingly sinning, then maybe you don't really love Christ like you think that you do. Sometimes we could say we try not to sin, but sometimes we do the exact opposite of not trying to sin. For example, that if you struggle with lust, but then you're going to strip clubs, if you're watching pornography, <coughs> if you're doing all these things, then you need to say, hey, am I really trying to stop sinning? Or am I really not? Or am I going towards the sin? Sometimes Satan doesn't even have to try. It's because we want sin so much. We call ourselves Christian, but we're not truly dying to the flesh every day like we need to. We're not living out a daily repentance. We're not giving God our all. We're not really trying. We're not going to be perfect, but we need to stop making excuses for sin and saying that we love him, but our actions are showing otherwise. I love this. In the word it says in Romans 10, 9-10, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth conf confession, repentance, is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord is over all is rich to whom call on him. For whoever calls on the Lord shall be saved. So no matter who you are, no matter what you've done, it says that whoever will call upon him will be saved. It doesn't matter what you've done, it doesn't matter what sin you may be stuck in right now. If you call on him and repent of your sin, he will forgive you and you will be saved. You will go from darkness to too light. By reading scripture daily and by praying daily, by having a real prayer life, your love for your love for sin will actually lessen and your love for God will actually grow. So continue to read scripture, continue to pray, and gather together with other believers. You need to have iron sharpening iron. A lot of the times that people fall back into sin, back into the old life, is because they don't have people surrounding them, discipling them, and building them up. If you're not a part of a church, get a part, a part of a church. If you are a part of a church, get a part of a group. Do something because Satan will try everything he can to get you back into sin, living in sin. Like I said, 
anyone can be saved and Satan doesn't want you to know that. He wants you to think that you're too far gone but you're not too far gone regardless of what you did in your past or what you're doing currently. So give it all up, repent, turn to Jesus. Repent means to turn 180, to go from one way to the n another way. Trust in God, trust in Jesus, and let him set you free.